Hey, welcome back everyone, Toys is here, and I'm back in again with yet another DC Multiverse news update for you. Today, we had the official reveal of three new characters that are part of a new DC Multiverse subline that's going to be entitled McFarlane Collector Edition. And it basically means it's going to be more money. <laughs> Which... Yeah, we'll see how things are going to go. Don't make me get out the McFarlane Toys dartboard while I'm at it, right? Now, just keep this in mind. This is a critique of photos. You got to wait till they're in hand. But this is largely just a discussion, a normal discussion. It's not the end of the world. If you don't like these, carry on about your business. So, if you're interested in any of these figures, I will have affiliate links down in the description below or... If it's working, you can click somewhere on the screen and it should take you to where you want to go. So again, as always, thank you so much for using my affiliate links. Now, to start it off, the very first figure comes from Action Comics. Number one, that guy that's smashing everyone's automobiles, right? Superman. Very interesting Superman, I have to say. One that I had high hopes for when I heard that it was being rumored and teased didn't really come out correctly. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, he's got red boots on the cover. Well, that's true. But inside the issue, and for a lot of all the promotions back in the day, it wasn't until they fixed the red boots, he had blue tights, basically, that were kind of sort of boots. You know what I mean? But that's the least of our problems here with this figure, to be quite honest with you. They're using that old Superman body mold that I just don't care for. It's just too frumpy for this version of Superman. I do like the head portrait, though. I will say that. I think they nailed that old-school look. Very cool. I like the head portrait. That's what I got for you. But like I said, least of our problems, they didn't even paint the belt loops, even though this new subline is touting a higher price tag with more paint apps, right? Go figure. So in actuality, yes, it is correct to have this as the blue boots and whatnot, but... It doesn't necessarily look good at all, right? It's kind of like, oh, it's another repaint, but not a very good repaint. He does come with chains, which is very iconic for Superman, right? Breaking the chains sort of deal. That looks good. No, this version of Superman does not have the S on the cape, so at least they got that part right <laughs> on the backside. Here's everything this Superman comes with. Now, keep in mind, this is now $30, and I got to tell you, for the accessories, for not really matching the source material, right? It's kind of like five steps there, ten steps back a lot of times with McFarlane toys. And more and more, we're seeing these little cuts and corners, which is making me go, yeah, it's just not for me, right? So you just go, it's not for me, and you move on, right? Saves you some money at the end of the day. You can always get it on clearance. But... Again, for the amount of things that it comes with, I don't need a trading card stand. I, I don't really need the trading card. I'm glad they put them in the box, but it's not something I need. I want accessories. I want freeze breath and heat rays and powers and a broken chain. Or he could break the chains. Something like that. Because for 30 bucks, no, this is not cutting it. Now, they do have some fancy new packaging for this subline. And I gotta tell you, to call it the McFarlane Collector Edition... I, it just doesn't sit well with me. It's not something I'm going to dwell on, but maybe something more having to do with DC Comics, right? Like Detective Comics, edition, you know, something like that, Action Comics, something that harkens back to DC instead of the McFarlane Collector Edition, which means they're probably going to do McFarlane Collector Edition Spawn and Warhammer and all that jazz, which, of course, that totally flows and I totally get it. But I think at this point they're kind of confusing the average DC Multiverse collector. We have DC Direct, we have DC Multiverse, we got the $25 collect to build figures, we have the single figures, we have the figures that come in the collector boxes, and it's really going 90s, but the 90s seemed a lot more organized, whereas this is just all over the place. It's really too much. It's confusing. It's not confusing me who dwells in this world 24 7. It's confusing the people that really have no clue, that think, you know, Superman has red boots in this version, which, yeah, on the cover, he totally does, as you can clearly see. So maybe something to swap out the boots, have two looks, something like that would have been infinitely better than this. <laughs> 
But I digress. I do love the head portrait. I'll totally give him that. So this is one that I will just casually say, it's not for me and I'll move on with the rest of my life. But if it is for you, I do have affiliate links down in the description below. Now to go from superhero to then super villain comes a new villain, which I can honestly tell you, I am not familiar with at all. I've seen the character in passing, but I just, just kind of, okay, yeah, it's a new character, I guess. One that kind of looks like a lot of other characters that we have seen in Batman's past. So this is Abyss, which kind of looks like the Phantasm and Deathstroke and everything else that kind of matches that whole look, right? Kind of looks like Dead Mouse a little bit with the whole X'd out eyes, which kind of has been done to death, you know what I mean, in terms of the design. But we're here to talk about the actual toy, and I got to tell you that from what I see, from matching up to the character and everything else, yeah, it looks spot on to the character that we see in the most recent of Batman comics. So hailing from around the time of Batman Inc., he has uh, ties to Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor creates him, and then just kind of gets rid of him, and then he turns into a villain because he's a psychopath stalker of Batman. So... Yeah, go figure. He comes with a scythe blade. He comes with a stand. He comes with an extra hand. He comes with a trading card and that stand, which, again, like I said, really doesn't do much for me. The figure looks great, but then that could have just been the $20 figure. Does it have a whole heck of a lot of paint on there? Kind of have to wait until I see it in hand. From what I can see, it looks like a lot of colored plastic, to be honest. But does it look good? Yes. Does it look better than the Action Comics Superman? Yeah. And in the box, he looks pretty cool as well. But then again, like I said, collect build figures, 25 bucks usually. You can't tell me that that has a whole heck of a lot more than the $25 figures. So, box is nice, everything looks good in that sense. You get it all packaged up, and yeah, you got a quote-unquote premium figure on your hand. But for me, and my associated character, which is zero to little at all, it's just kind of like, yeah, well, this one would be a clearance figure, most definitely. But again, like I said, for Action Comics and Abyss and everything else, if you like it, I'll have links down below. And now for the third figure of the wave, which Abyss was technically third, but we're just kind of going out of order because this is the one that I'm thoroughly enjoying the most. But there's still some probs, right? Weird probs, ones that make you think, well, they're just kind of reusing it and getting the most out of the mold, which I totally understand. Alan Scott, the original Alan Scott, doesn't have those big dome plate things on his shoulders and around his neck and his little capey spawn thing, right? Which kind of harkens to around Dread Lantern, which subsequently there is also a McFarlane Toys figure coming for. So you see the reuse, right? They've swapped out enough parts and pieces. It's kind of the most recent look for Alan Scott. You can say that. So it doesn't really bother me all too much. I still think that it looks like a great character. And he's still very much a classic looking Alan Scott, even though he has more of the updated look. I don't know what's going on with the ring. I reserve judgment to see... When I have that in hand, right? <laughs> Odd. He does have a very distinct ring. He's not your typical Green Lantern. For those in the know, it's difficult to explain. He finds a lantern. It was a whole different thing. It wasn't the whole Green Lantern core back in the day, but just rest assured. Alan Scott, he's a cool classic character. I like the colors, the purples, the greens, the purple cape. It's awesome, right? He does look pretty good, and I really like the head portrait as well. So I think... In the totality of this new subline for McFarlane Toys, this one takes the cake in terms of, yes, we know this character. Yes, he is closest to the classic look. And I'll be honest with you, while I do like Alan Scott a lot, this is not one where I'm going to nitpick the costume. It's totally fine for what it is. Big old dinner plate things. Dinner plate nipples, whatever they are. See, that's where you got to be careful. You make them too big. There's various sizes when certain artists draw it. But then, I know as a lot of people are going to say, you look at the trading card, and then it's Alex Ross's artwork, which, yeah, that looks different to what you're getting in the box. I See, I totally get the confusion, but being in this world so much, you kind of go, okay, well, this is why this fits, and that doesn't... Yeah, you kind of start making excuses. I would like to see a little bit more cohesion at this point, because everything has become too much of a mishigash, right? You got the collector packaging. Now, in this case, I do like that they gave him Green Lantern accessories. He's got the lantern. He's got some particle effects. A flight stand would have been great, really to add to the box, because in all honesty, at this point, I'm not seeing the value at the $30 
price point, and that's a bummer. McFarlane is usually really good at adding the value to all the figures. I mean, there's still 20 bucks for the most part. They just did a Batmobile and a Batman, which we all know about that, but it was 70 bucks. Big vehicle and a figure. That's good. That's value, right? But this, yeah, I don't have high hopes for this, unfortunately. This is not a good start for a wave one of an offshoot. It's kind of a downgrade, to be honest with you, from where they started. This is not a premium wave to me. This is not premium paint. This is kind of like lackluster at best, which makes me sad to say because I do enjoy the DC Multiverse line, but more and more as we have done these videos for quite some time now, if I'm not talking about Batman, I'm talking about how poor the Superman figures look. So it really is five steps forward, six steps back, 25 steps back in some cases, and I want to be eventually able to put away that McFarlane dartboard, right? <laughs> Just kidding. We all don't have to take it so seriously, but these are my honest thoughts, and this is why you come here, and I very much appreciate that, as always. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for Comic-Con next week. We're going to have full coverage of that. Again, for those interested, if you want these figures, which, of course, there's going to be people out there that want them. It's just not for me, although I really do like the Alan Scott, so I'll be grabbing him. But as always, yeah, affiliate links or just click on the screen. Thanks to the whole new YouTube algorithm thing. It provides all the dealios that you can easily buy, right? Making it easier and easier these days. But as always, you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, you got to work on the cohesion, McFarlane Toys. These designs are too way out in left field most of the time. They got to look like the source material. It really matters to everyone that loves DC Comics. And there's a lot of people that love DC Comics, myself included. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.